so we will uh, most of the time we'll yeah we'll try to let them have stories and things absolutely yeah. of course yep Are they on the side? Okay. I didn't know they were on. Oh yeah, turn them, turn them up a little bit, please. That's good. All right. Hello? Hi. Hi. Is this Jules? This is Justin. Oh, hi, Justin. We'll get you started in just a minute. Can you hear me all right? Yep, we can hear you just fine. Hey, what's up, guys? All right, is that Jules? It is. All right, thanks for joining us this morning. Yeah, no, thanks for coming up. All right, so uh, I'll give you guys a chance to introduce yourselves. Uh, go ahead. Justin, you first. I'm Justin Siller. I was a co-lead designer, concept artist, and a creator of Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. Oh, excellent. Hey, Justin, how you doing, man? Hey, Jules, long time no see. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's getting, it's getting 20 years. It's 20 years. <laughs> Insane. Uh, I'm Jules Watcher. Jules I'm fast. Just... Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Uh, I was the lead artist on Zero the Kamikaze Squirrel. It was my first lead artist uh, role at Iguana. And I did uh, the player animations and tried to make sure uh, the rest of the art looked good. All right. We're happy to have you here. And uh, if you would, just jump in whenever you have like something to add in or stories from development or anything like that. I'm sure I'll have a couple surprises throughout the run for you too. So uh, yeah, be feel, feel free to chime in on any of those. Um, but we are gonna get started. Um, I'm excited to see how you get through this game in 20 minutes. Oh yeah. <laughs> well, I think, I think he gets it even faster. I think we were able to do All right. in 20 minutes. So, so on a countdown? All right. So on three, two, one, uh-oh. Uh <laughs> Oops. We'll try again. Yeah, All right. Fun, I think arrow two and zero were being made at the same time at the corner. All right. That time. Three, was, uh, two, fun, one, fun go. All right, we just started. I know you guys are probably 20 seconds behind on the stream, but uh, we'll try to keep you updated uh, <laughs> through audio alerts. <laughs> So yeah, uh, you just started to talk about some of the inspirations, I guess, uh, would be interesting. Yeah, well, what did you inspire you, Justin, to kind of... Well, I was going... Sorry, are you still there? Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. I was developing characters for Arrow, and I felt that he needed some kind of a doppelganger nemesis that was on the same level playing field as him, you know, with similar abilities and... The name kind of almost came first, you know, as a play off Arrow, Zero came to mind, and I thought of the kamikaze pilots, and I applied it to a similar animal, the flying squirrel. And, uh, you know, it went from there. All right. I see definitely something that's present throughout this whole game is speed. Um, <laughs> how much did that play? Uh oh, how much did that play into uh, your development style? Uh, as you just wanted to make a, a fast game, like it plays, I would say, significantly faster than the Arrow games. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, it was uh, Arrow. You know, had some criticism for being very difficult, and uh, I wanted the technique in Zero to be something it was a bit to master. Uh, but it ultimately would play quicker and you know, more like the speed you see in games like Sonic. Uh, once you mastered it, you could play through rather quickly. And I didn't think of speedruns at the time, but I see now that you know, it lends itself to that. Oh, yeah. 
I see, I, I'm hopefully I'm, I'm still on sync, but I see you're on your mountain level, which is actually one of the level sets I worked on. A lot of fun doing the level art for that. It's awesome. Yeah. It's back to memories. <laughs> this, this is a... Uh... It's kind of strange going between the two different stages because the first couple are very linear, and then this one is uh, kind of asymmetrical almost. Yeah. Jules, who came up with that? Uh, that was Iguana's idea, I think, for the sniper. Are you seeing through the sniper lens? I uh, mean, yeah, Neil was the you know, art in-house designer. Uh, Neil that, was, that was his, um, wasn't it? Yeah, and he basically, I mean, it's beyond what you worked on, uh, Justin. He designed everything uh, else that I'm aware of. He was, yeah, he was the single design. <laughs> and again, that he won. Oh, nice. That's how it's in that skip -ish. Oh, I'm 20 seconds behind, but the way you skipped the, uh, the boss, the mini boss guy in the movie, that was awesome. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that's actually from a bug, and you can see it on the second guy, too. Yeah. There's a. Uh, you have a one frame window to jump after you run right. into a wall, nice. and uh, you can use that just to skip right by him. <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember us using that technique. <laughs> <laughs> it's something I think you guys discovered later. I was impressed when I saw that the first time. Oh, yeah. This is Chibi here. Um, what, were, what were you guys' inspirations for the level creations of this game? Um, artistically or uh, functionally? Uh, functionally and artistically. <laughs> I'm not sure that was really uh -oh. nice, but then Justin, you know, as far as the art, we're huge, really inspired by the Aladdin, and like Disney movies at the time, and, you know, Aladdin and um, uh, Lion King, I guess, were coming out around that time. Um, obviously, this doesn't really look like those those movies, but that, you know, we were definitely looking at the Disney stuff for sure. I can um, definitely no, see I the see Aladdin that influence. I like the way that, that the flag thing ends, you know, where you pull down the uh, thing at the end of the level. And, uh, you pump up the doors, you know, on the first uh, beach level like this. We very much totally ripped off the, uh, the, the lava level was very much uh, inspired by the Aladdin, big time. Oh, yeah. The, the music on that was uh, inspired by Terminator 2 music. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. oh, that's awesome. And, uh, oh. A lot of the other music was just heavy metal and industrial. <laughs> this, yeah. mini, this boss soundtrack is actually one of my favorite tracks from the game. So. Okay. Yeah, this is a fun game to work on. Yes. This Scree girl. Screech there was a uh, concept designed by our, our in-house artist, Mario Zavala. Mm -hmm. I will admit that I do not know any of the boss names. <laughs> uh, I have my own names for all of them, and that was Batman. But uh, <laughs> yeah. coming up, we have, I call him Firebug. I don't know what his, uh, his canon name is. Uh, I, I, I did the uh, pixel. I actually animated him. Wait, I forgot that. I did the pixel version of him. I forgot about that. I was tricky to do at the time. Oh yeah, I mean the the graphics in this are quite beautiful for a Super Nintendo game. Um, definitely uh, uh, concentrating a little bit. Sorry. Yeah, no, that's a fun, <laughs> tricky part. Yeah, but... All right. Yeah, and um, it's interesting the artwork difference between the SNES and the Genesis versions was kind of wacky, where we. Because the screen resolution was so different, you know, the Genesis was, you know, more 320 by 240, whereas the SNES was like 2 something. Why? It was weird. We had to take all of the uh, arrow, oh, sorry, zero frames and scale them, you know, horizontally so they look the same. Oh my gosh, you're yeah. giving me the best lock here. Really obnoxious. But, um, and then, that's fine. I expect to die at least once on him. Um, but the Genesis version definitely didn't look quite as. Uh, yeah, there's uh, a I, I played the Genesis version a couple times. I gotta say, I much prefer this version. Yeah, the Genesis had some technical <laughs> niceties about it, though. You know, definitely a lot more sprites on screen and stuff. Mm -hmm. but, but yeah, visually, it's, it's really nice. So, two questions one, who designed the auto scrollers? And uh, <laughs> Two, uh, who designed the, the Firebug boss fight? Because that's probably the most annoying one in the game for me. <laughs> um, Justin and Neil, I guess. I don't know. You can blame Justin and Neil for that one. All right. <laughs> yeah, I, it's just uh, the Firebug boss battle goes on so yeah. long. He has 30 HP, and you can only do one damage to him at a time. 
So that's the the longest battle in the game. And yeah, then the jet was, uh, tricky. It moves so fast. You have like this very small reaction time. Unless of course you do what you did. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I, I don't remember it being that easy. It seems like some debug we left in accidentally or something. Yeah, if you go to the very top of the screen and just hold up, you'll miss a lot of the obstacles, and yeah, that. Uh, it that makes it like something we did so the game testers could test something else <laughs> that day and it never switched back. Oops. <laughs> Don't worry, you guys can patch it later. <laughs> yeah, we'll do an update. <laughs> so the tree levels are a lot of fun. Um, it's more uh, kind of you can go just about anywhere it feels like, but um, like all these vines and stuff makes for interesting movement options going through. Yeah. Um, the art director at one at the time, uh, Matt Stubbington, um, definitely had a huge hand in the art style of the game. He's quite an amazing artist. Uh, actually, and this reminds me, actually, we remember one night um, uh, doing an all-nighter working on this tile set together. He definitely was in, you know, he set the tone, created the look, and I just did what he asked me to do, because he was awesome. <laughs> right. <laughs> learning. I don't know what was going on, but uh, yeah, it's an awesome looking level. I love the way this looks, which one is nice. It's really yeah. nice. They were supposed to be. The game is kind of a collecting mix of it my, is. My, my art, your art, and Mario's and Matt's art. Exactly, it really is. It <laughs> a lot is of people exactly did that. You see our different styles all kind of mesh mash together in the game. Yeah, I mean, I lean mean more towards the, the Mario style, naturally, whereas Matt is more of a traditional painter. Um, yeah, yeah, seeing the mesh together is interesting. <laughs> the eclectic would be a good, a good description for it. So some of the gameplay probably comes across that way as well. Yeah, yeah, because I know Neil is very much a Nintendo kind of fan as well. Yeah, there was supposed to be a lot more to that stage, but uh, it's okay. Don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> Not those mushroom platforms. <laughs> the, um, like the... Go ahead. I do like that Eric is using all of Zero's abilities. Um, yeah. It tricks up his sleeve. So many people at the time just try to play it like Super Mario and didn't know what to make of all the alternate so, weapons and moves. One of the things that I find confuses people when they first start playing this game is how the double jump works. Because in this one, you actually want to uh, double jump as fast as possible. Whereas other games, it's kind of like, oh, if I have a double jump, I'll wait and use it and extend yeah, my distance. True. But, it uses the uh, speed lift or high again. Yeah, and uh, like I know some, some people who are very good at games in general, and they could not figure that out and <laughs> ended up kind of... Uh, they couldn't get through the, uh, the cave levels. Um, right. They were that tricky. Was... Yeah. So, what were your inspiration for making these games? Um, yeah, they they went through. It was a mix of like Sonic and other games, but you can see a lot of everything in it. Oh no! Man. There it is. All of the uh, classic platform Ghost and Goblins, Sonic, Mario. This is, is it... definitely the era where you know the mascot, the two D platformer characters was definitely at its height, you know. Or, you know, as you played before, Bubsy. Yeah, like I was that. just about to say. Uh, okay. I think Bubsy came out within the same three month time frame. Mm -hmm. So, so I, many. I just right on died the right there on purpose. Yeah. Um, uh, I remember animating these doors up and closing and doing this level art. It was interesting. All right, so these taffy pullers are kind of a pain in the butt, so we can yeah. just get around them. Paper rollers? Yeah, I call them the taffy rollers. Okay. You're doing good on time. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, there's a, a death warp there. If you just happen to go up to the right side, um, you can move on to the next screen without having to go through it. Uh, there we go. <laughs> nice. Yeah, towards the late part of the development cycle, all my testers could play the game and. I'm sure a half hour or less. And mm -hmm. they urged me to, you know, ramp it up the difficulty level, and I was like, no, you better. <laughs> it's night and day. Yeah, all right. 
So no one, no one who's picked it up for the first time is going to play the game in 20 minutes. So. Yeah. Oh yeah, that's that's definitely true. So it's you know, it, I guess a byproduct of that is now that you know speedrun gamers uh, can enjoy it, and not you know, get hampered by uh, artificially ramped difficulty. <laughs> Well, we don't shy away from difficulty, certainly, but uh, we, we enjoy the, all the movement techniques that you definitely put in. Why are it so easy? Jet pack stage, that's awesome. That was uh, actually 3D, at the time, that was the first uh, uh, 3DS Max um, version. So a lot of those things we actually created in 3D first, which were over the no. cutting edge at the time. <laughs> I'm able to kill firebugs so fast because you gave three buttons that happen to fire, so I can just mash all of them, and I can get almost out of a shot per frame. And his 30 HP is not very intimidating then. And that guy is, is that Jack the Sheets? <laughs> the Lumberjack is Jack the Sheets, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. We're gonna get, please? There he is. <laughs> Two, and time. 1301, all right, thank you. That's a really nice one. Ooh, I almost wish it was a little longer so we could talk to you guys more. <laughs> <laughs> what was his girlfriend's name? Was it Zoe or? Amelia. Amelia, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Nice there we style. go. Some of the names, Justin Siller. <laughs> Yeah. So thank you guys very much for joining us today. Uh, yeah, anything, no any parting fun thoughts fun. on this, or um, anything you want to plug? Give thanks uh, through the creation of this game or your time since. Um, go buy new mugs on any platform you want. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's my plug. <laughs> uh, I just want to say, Jules, uh, it was a real pleasure working with Iguana. You guys were eminent professionals. And, Thanks, uh, man. There's met, met all the milestone dates and were easy to work with. Yeah, it's fun, man. Thanks. It was, uh, it was good times. This old Neil Nancy, he, I think he was trying to be here with us today. Yeah, Neil, Neil was uh, trying to be, but he had to have a trip to Europe right about yeah, now, exactly, so yeah. it's a little bit of a problem. Yeah. Oh, well. But he's, he's here with us in spirit. Exactly. Cool. Thanks, guys. It was a pleasure. All right. Thanks for joining us so early. Thanks, yeah, so, all right, take care, guys. All right. Goodbye, guys. Bye-bye. All right, and that's... That's zero. Thanks, everybody. Uh, that was a great run by OmniGamer, and thanks again to the devs for joining us. Next up, we have El Viento by Spine Shark. I thought it would be better off to just let the devs talk. <laughs> We have a $100 donation from Lots Cause. Hey bro, great job on Metal Warriors and the Zero, the Kamikaze Squirrel this marathon. I really appreciate the hard work you put into those games and speedrunning in general. Be prepared to get rocked and smashed when you come home. Love you, bro. We've got a $55 donation from Emil. First time AGDQ last winter and I loved it. SGDQ is here and once again I want to show my appreciation for your hard work and great entertainment. Kill all